and the object here is to process a chunk of data that's been given to us, print it out on a single line, and then um, we also are going to need a conditional. We want to keep track of how many times each weapon is used and print out a count of it right over here. So I'm going to move quicker through this one and not take as much time to stop and explain everything I'm doing. If you want something with more of an in-depth explanation, then go back to uh, putting it all together, putting VBA all together, number three, the first loops video before this one, and I, I spend a lot more time on that one explaining the details. For this one, let's just make it work uh, so you can see how I'm going to do this a bit differently. So here's my, uh, my Excel, my VBA module. I'm going to insert a module to write code on. If you just did the previous loops example, you can just continue to use module one and work on the same document, uh, maybe enter down a few times. But we always stop, start with option explicit. Oops. I'm going to make a sub batch practice clue. And simply to mix things up for no better reason, I'm going to use absolute references for both the input and the output this time. So what that means is I need to keep track of which row I'm getting my inputs from and which row I'm getting my outputs from, or I'm printing my outputs to. Now, I prefer using this because it's actually faster. What this means is I'm not going to select cell A1 and then move my cursor through each chunk of data. I'm simply going to keep track of, of where each chunk of data is supposed to be, and that also assumes that all the data is uniform, meaning there's only one space in between each chunk. Um, what I'm about to do would not work if there wasn't. So you have to kind of adapt your methods to the data you've been given. Okay, so that, what that means is I'm going to need to keep track of both my input row and my output row. So let's start by creating our variables just to keep track of our iterations. Dim i row as integer, o row as integer. And then let's go ahead and initialize each of them. i row equals 1, o row equals 1. So what this means is that when each time I go through the loop, the first time I go through the loop, I'm going to start by grabbing my input here on row 1, and then I'm going to start by outputting also on row 1. See cell A1 and C1, this is where I'm going to begin. I'm actually going to delete this out of here. Even though my inputs are going to increment by four rows each time, my outputs are going to increment by one row each time, so you have to keep track of these separately in my code. Okay, so I'm going to run a do loop. Uh, that simply uh, says I'm going to uh, do until um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep track of three of each of the three pieces of information first. Uh, as we go through, we need to keep track of name as string. Uh, room as string and weapon as string. And we're going to go until name is blank. So the first time through, that means I'm going to have to initialize name equals not blank. Why do I do that? You'll see right here. I'm going to say do until name equals no. Loop. So how am I incrementing this loop? Well, I have to set name equal to something different each time. So here's how I'll do that. I'm going to say the first time through the loop, I'm going to say name equals uh, cells. It's always in column one, but the row the first time through is going to be found in I row, column one, a value. So let's run this, start running it so you can see what happens here. F8, I row, a row are both set to one, name is set to not blank. Do until name is equal to null. Well, name is not null, therefore it's going to enter inside the loop. And then at this point, I'm going to say, okay, now name is equal to the value in cells one comma one, or A1, which is Mr. Green. Okay, now I'm going to go back and loop again. Name is still not null, so it's going to do this again. And right now I have an infinite loop. So what I need to do is I need to move or increment I row. All right, let's stop this and do that next. Okay, the first name is always going to be contained 
on uh, every four rows. First time on row one, plus four rows to row five, plus four rows to row nine. So I'm going to say I row equals I row plus four. Okay, so now watch what happens as we test it. F8, name is set to not blank. Notice I'm looking down here in my locals window. F8 again and again. Now, now name is Mr. Green. I add four to I row. Now notice I row is set to five. Therefore, I go back, oops, F8. Up here now, it's going to set name equal to cells five comma one, which is now, again, Mr. Green, because Mr. Green's listed in both the first two chunks over here. Let's go through it again, and this time it should be set to Mrs. White, which it is. And so I'm going through and just changing name to each of those values over here. Okay, great. So we're incrementing through our input row without ever moving the cursor. See how the cursor is stuck here in C1? Because I never use the select method, I only refer to the value, and I use cells instead of range, or active cell. These are absolute references because I'm, hard, I'm plugging a number in here instead of saying active cell dot offset. I'm giving it the actual number each time I want it to grab a name from. And I'm, and I'm incrementing through. Okay, so now that we're collecting the inputs, let's write this right here. One, collect input. Okay, two, form processing. We're actually not going to do any of that quite yet. Three, output results and when we're inside of a loop I'm not going to call this step 4 although it kind of is step 4 I'm going to call this increment the loop okay and that includes incrementing both the input and the output for now I've just incremented the input so I'm not going to do any processing yet I'm simply going to output name now so now I'm going to use cells again but this time I'm using output row but I don't want to put it in column 1, I want to put it in column C, which is column 1, 2, 3. So output row, column 3, dot value is going to equal. All I'm doing now is I'm grabbing the name from over here, moving it over there. But just like with the input row, I have to increment the output row. The reason why is I can come through here and I can print out. Notice I just printed out Mrs. White. Oh, because I was halfway through, I need to start it over again. Uh, let's do start this over. There we go. Set to Mr. Green. I output Mr. Green to row because O row is initialized to one and one down here. I put it in C represented by the number three one C one. Keep putting F eight next time through. Mr. Green next time through is now Mrs. White. But look, it's still printing it all here on C one. That's because in addition to incrementing the output input row, we also need to increment the output row. For the output row, we don't want to print out every four lines as with the input where we want to gather it every four lines. Output, we want to print out one line at a time. Therefore, output, we say equals output row plus one. Okay, let's stop this and start it again now. Now, the first name is Mr. Green. It prints it out. We increment the input, increment the output. Now, next time through, it's going to grab the input from row five, which is where Mr. Green is. And it's going to print the output out on row 2, which is exactly what we want. We want it to move to the next blank spot. So we continue on. And notice how over in my Excel spreadsheet, it's pr printing out each of the names one line at a time. So here's the shell of what we need to do. Let's just extend it now and include both the, uh, the room and the weapon each time. Okay, so let's add here. Let's say now we need to say room equals cells, I row, okay, now this is going to start the first time through on row 1, but the room is actually on row 2, so it's always going to be I row plus 1, but in column A, therefore the number 1 right here, top value, and then weapon is going to equal cell, oops, I row plus 2, it's always two spots down from the cell we're referring to where the first name is, which IRO keeps track of. All, always though in column A. Okay, so stop this. Oops, I meant to delete all that. 
Okay, and eight. Name is set to Mr. Green. Notice down here in the locals window. Now room is set to the third room. And web is the lead pipe, just like it appears over here. But we're still just printing out the name only. All right, so what processing needs to happen? All we need to do is take each of these and put them together into a sentence. So I'm going to create a variable just for the sake of separating out our steps called sentence as string. There are shortcuts you can do without this variable, but it might make it easier for some of you to think through it. So I'm going to say each of the loop that sentence is going to equal I'm going to concatenate these variables together, the name and the phrase in the, to say the name in the, and then I'm going to concatenate the name of the room. So I've got spaces between here and here, so that when I put the name, there's a space before the word in and a space after the word the before the room comes up next. And then here I'm going to say with the, Case. And you're not going to see this on the screen, but I'm just going to type in weapon like that. All my processing is is performing some string concatenation. Okay, so my output now, instead of outputting their name, I'm going to output that sentence. Alright, let's stop this. And F8 and go through one at a time. Okay, we gather the name, room, weapon. We build the sentence. Most down here, sentence Mr. Green in the billiard room with the, this doesn't show at all, with the lead pipe. Okay, F8, we continue. Notice it's now printed out over here, just like it should be. And input row, increment the output row. So now we're looking to get from row 5 and to print out to row 2 next time. That's exactly how it works. So, go ahead and just finish by hitting play. And notice all of our sentences print out here just right. So even though our inputs come four lines at a time, our outputs are one line at a time. And here on row 449, oh, no, we've got a little problem. Oh, this is good. Okay, fix it. Notice this last row here, all it is is in the, with the. Why would that be? Come back here and take a look. So our do until says do until name equals null. Okay, we set name right here. All right, once it's set, we down here tell it to move along to the next spot. However, um, once it moves down to, once the input moves down to the very last spot, meaning it moves from here down to here, row 1793, the name gets set um, right here and the row is incremented and even though the next row refers to row 1793, name is still set to Mrs. White. Therefore, it goes into the loop, and it resets name equal to null, room equal to null, and weapon equal to null, and then prints out this sentence, which is just in the, with the, if name, room, and weapon are all null, and then outputs the results, and then increments the loop again, and then it ends because name is null. So what we need to do is stop the loop uh, before that happens, or simply don't print out the uh, output results unless we have a name. So it, it's just another way of doing this. We could simply say if name not equal to null, then print it out. So this is just like what we have up here, except now name has been set right here after we've entered into the loop and it'll only print out if it finds something for name, which will avoid that last line right here, which is in the, with the. So I'm going to delete everything again, rerun it, play. Now notice it doesn't print out that last line. Also, you may not be familiar with this version of a conditional of an if statement. If you don't have, if, if, you, if your condition is actually an if then else null, according to flowchart syntax, meaning we have something we want to do if this evaluation is true, but we don't want to do anything if it's false. And if what we want to, the processing we want to perform fits on one line, then we can simply have this if condition, then processing, and no end if needed, and it's all on one line. So it's kind of a special exception.
Okay, so, so far so good. Our sentence works, but what we need to do next is count up our weapon and print them out over here. The nice thing is there's no loop iterations, there's no output we need to keep track of. We know exactly which cells it's always going to appear on. But let me show you something else cool that we can kind of do here. Uh, well, you know, I'll get to that in a second. Let's start by counting up the number of times each weapon is used. Okay, uh, we could have a variable for each type of weapon, lead pipe, revolver, candlestick, and then we increment, add one to each of those variables each time we find those variables. Or uh, we can do this instead. We can simply say, look, here as we output the results, let's have another if. If weapon equals, we'll start with the first one over here in the list, candlestick. Copy that. Weapon equals candlestick. Then, Take the value in this cell right here and add one to it. In other words, cells actually need to range since we don't uh, need to re uh, change the number each time. We, it's, it's a static location. Range always going to be E2. Range E2. Uh, value is going to equal range E2 dot value one. Notice this is just like saying I row equals or O row equals O row plus one, but instead of the variable O row, we're referring to the location on the spreadsheet. Whatever values in that location equals itself plus one. So then what we'll have to do is copy this, add an else if, and then let's change the next one to the next location, the next weapon, dagger. Else if weapon equals dagger we're going to increment the value in E3. All right, let's copy this and do this for the remaining weapon. We have, uh, I think, one, two, three others. Wrong, we'll find out here. So let's copy and paste here, lead pipe. Pipe, and let's make sure we don't forget E4. Four, revolver, I'm going to be short, just one, five, five, rope, E6, E6, and then let's add one more, handle, wrench, and that will be pasted, or that will be kept track in row seven. Okay, let's try this out and see if it works. Play, there we go. All of our counts have been printed out. Let me walk through and let you see this working in action as we, as we go through here. Oops, I'm going to delete this. Go ahead and delete all these. Okay, now let's talk through this one moment at a time. Okay, first time through. Initialize I row, O row. Initialize name. Oh, by the way, do you understand now why I initialized name to not blank? Well, the first time through, after declaring name, name is equal to empty. So it won't ever enter this loop at all if name is equal to empty. So I had to plug in, I could have put anything in here, anything in here. It didn't matter at all, as long as it wasn't blank, to allow the loop to begin so this condition was um, evaluated as false. So it doesn't matter because right here we change name to the name that it should be. Anyway, let's continue. Okay, so we set a name, room weapon, build a sentence. Our first if, okay, uh, right here, is the weapon equal to candlestick? No, it's going to skip. Is it dagger? No. The lead pipe? Yes. Therefore, it's going to set range E4 equal to itself, which is currently zero, blank is interpreted as zero, plus one. So E4, we should see a one appear here next after hitting F8. And it does. Great, increment, you go through again. Notice here, over on the Excel spreadsheet, how 
each time you go through the loop, it's using this long if else if statement to keep track of all the numbers. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Um, again, basically we've just taken a loop and we've used uh, absolute referencing to both collect the inputs as well as to print out the outputs. Um, we've used a conditional here with a bunch of else ifs. This is something very similar to what you might see on a test question. Uh, let your instructor know if you have any questions on how this was done. Thanks.